Okay, so has anybody seen the this week's challenge document? So maybe if someone could brief us on this week's challenge to get us started, that would be nice. So who would like to volunteer? Yes, just yes. Yes, this week we we work uh, in order to be able to forecast sales for pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company. But what is new? What is near new here is that we will be working with with time series, uh, and time series has data which depends on time. So that is. Yes, so yeah, that's correct. So, anyone else? Okay, so has anybody figured out why we are doing this challenge? What's the business overview is? What is the objective? If maybe someone, if someone could summarize. Yes, Michael. Yeah, I think uh, the business uh, overview is to support uh, the managers, uh, marketing managers of the Rosman Pharmaceuticals to predict uh, the sales uh, uh, trend ahead of time, like six months before, uh, I mean six weeks before uh, the time uh, of required. Yeah, okay, that, that was great. Okay, so Wangui, maybe unmute yourself and you can talk. Um, I think uh, what Michael said is correct, at least uh, that's also how I understood it. We're just trying to use the given factors like the promotion, the new store openings, how they affect purchasing power of customers in six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, so I, I can assume that you guys are understood because that's correct. And the reason I asked is that just before we start our today's session, it's best to know why we are taking this session and why are we, uh, how are we going to apply it in our challenge? And it's good to start with your understanding because it's going to help you decide on and have a clear uh, paths to solving your ch weekly challenge and uh, so for example in the submissions we've asked you guys the, your business understanding in a summary and uh, most of you have not done that and it's best to always start with that and to have a clear understanding of what what the challenge is and what the business requires so so I think you guys have understood so thank you for that. And with that, I think we can start today's uh, session. And it is on time series analysis. Uh, yes, Mohammed, is that a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, okay. I, I, I saw that uh, you, you are you were explaining why do we need time series analysis in, in our project this week. So I kind of missed the answer uh, and I want you uh, to re clarify the answer again. Okay, so have you read the document? Yes, I read them. Okay, so can, can you maybe start with your understanding? What do you think uh, your task is this week? What is the objective? What are you trying to solve? Yes, we are. We are trying to solve. Uh, we are trying to predict the the forecast of sales for the next six weeks. Six weeks uh, by analyzing uh, the the type of uh, purchase that users made or that clients made throughout. 
the data. Yeah, so I think you basically un answered your question. So we're trying to forecast uh, the sales in a, in a six months, and we use time series to have this forecast and to help us with our understanding. So, so that is why we use time series analysis. And as we go more into the session, maybe that will be more clear for you. And I okay. think you've already understood the concept. It's, I think you're undermining your knowledge here. So that's why I asked you why you know so far. OK, thank you. OK. Um, OK, so what is time series analysis? Uh, like, oh, like how you all described it, it's just a way of understanding uh, and studying the characteristics, the characteristics of the responses variables with respect to time. So uh, we have different variables and characters, and we're trying to understand uh, their uh, characters, and you're, we are trying to define it and predict it within the respectable time. So what time series is, is just uh, it's a sequence of data points where indexed in, in, a timed, in, in a timely order. So this time stamps data is collected in a different points over a different period of time. And these are typically, uh, this data points typically contain uh, successive major measures made from the same source. So uh, we have the same source and we are, have collected our data over time in a, an interval and we are trying to track this data and their change over time. So we are trying to predict the future within the, with the data we have so far. And so, yeah, the basic uh, objective of forecasting is the time series, and which is, it's a set of observations recorded over time. So for example, in a forecasting applications, the observations are typically recorded with a regular frequency, or let's say it could be uh, daily or monthly or yearly. So it has to be an irregular frequency and and yeah, so to estimate the target variable and then the name of predicting or forecasting, we use the time variable as the point of reference. So, so to estimate the variables that we are trying to target and we use the time variable as a point of reference. So time is our main point of re reference here. So in a time series, uh, it's widely used for non-stationary data like economics, weather, stock price and retail sales. So this is just some examples on where we can apply time series analysis to uh, predict the economic statistics of, let's say, a specific country or to analyze and to predict the weather and to, to see the rainforest of some country or to see the stock prices or to forecast sale of a specific store. So how do we analyze time series? So first we start with collecting data and cleaning it. So this is this always is this is always the first step: cleaning data and pre prepping data for the next uh, processes. So we visualize this data and uh, we try to analyze and have insights gained from this uh, data that we visualized, and we we should we usually visual visualize it with respect to time. So we have we always have time uh, as a point and we visualize it with respect to time versus the key feature we are trying to predict. So uh, and after this visualization, we observe the stationary of the series. So we look at the visualization and we decide if our data is actually stationary or non-stationary and we observe this series and we develop charts to understand its nature. So we gain insights and understand the nature by developing these charts. And we start building models that could fit our objective and uh, our business needs. So after building our model and training it, we extract insight from the predictions. So that is the basic uh, 
uh, steps we follow in analyzing time series data. So what are the significance of time series? So time series is mainly used for prediction and forecasting analysis. Like we said, it can be used in economics, weather, uh, sales prediction, and different, for example, it can also be used in, in health. to predict the heart beating of a person or some parents. And so specific to the time-based problem statement. So we have, like we said, time as a point of reference. And it includes analyzing the history, historical data sets and its patterns. So we understand and we see the patterns of our data sets. And the second one could be understanding and matching the current situation with patterns derived from the previous stage. Yeah, so we used, um, the previous uh, data or the previous stage pattern to understand and predict what our current situation could be or to try and match the current situation. And the third, the third one is to understand the factors or that influence a certain variable in different periods. So we might have different uh, factors within the specific time that are affecting our variables and we uh, it can help us time series analysis can help us understand which factors affect the other certain variables and uh in a at a, in a defined time or in some period so what are the components of time series um so we have different components of time series and the various reasons or the forces which affect the value of our observation in the time series are this components. Uh, so it could be a trend, it could be seasonality, or it could be cyclic or regular. Given that it is continuous or time, it, it is a continuous time. Frame. So it could be, uh, so here a trend would be, it could be positive or negative. And it's a component of time series, and it represents a persistence or a long, a long-term change in the mean of the series. And uh, it's actually the slowest moving part of the series, and it represents over a large, a large time scale of importance. And the second one is seasonality. Here, uh, it's a regular or fixed interval and it shifts within the data sets in a continuous timeline. So it could be uh, cyclic or it could be curved. So we say that, to say that a time series is seasonal, uh, it has to exhibit irregularity over a period and change the mean of the series. So seasonal changes are generally fo followed uh, a clock or a calendar, or it could be a month, so we might have holidays or over uh, a repetition of times. So it could be seasonal. So we might have um, holidays or weekdays or weekends that are affecting our data. So the third one is cyclic. Uh, here there are no fixed intervals. It's just a certain movement and it has different patterns and. In seasonality, it's a regular or fixed interval shifts, but in cyclics, there is no uh, fixed or certain interval or movement in our patterns or in our analysis if we look at our data or if we visualize and see our output, it, it's not fixed or it, there is no certain interval uh, that is uh, the same. So in irregularity, uh, it's the unexpected situation where our data or our data we're trying to visualize or show are showing spikes or showing variations. So it's not uh, here, this is also not fixed or it's not regular. It's just an expected situation that can spike uh, our analysis. So here, if we look, if we take a look at the, our graph, like say the visualization here, uh, so you guys can see my screen, right? So if someone may be there, right? Yes, okay. 
So uh, here, this is a trend. This is just uh, an increasing trend. And uh, it's showing a trend, and it's actually uh, growing here. And it's showing against time. It's So it's a positive trend. We can say that this is a positive trend. And in seasonality, it's uh, here it's a long term. So it, it always is increasing, or it's always a positive trend. In seasonality, it's a short, it's rather a sh in a short period of time. So it's a, it's in within a fixed time interval, and it's showing. It's here if you could see it's swinging between going down and going up. So there are different patterns. You can see that it's seasonal, and it has. If you look at, if you take a look at it, it's it's a uh, it's a regular pattern. But here in a cycle in a cyclic pattern, it's it's also a long term, but it's not. Uh, it's not a regular pattern. It's going up and down, but if you we take a look, the the distance between the time and it's varying, and it's not fixed or it's not regular. And in irregular uh, component here, it's so we have a, a, a spike here, right? So it's showing a different variation on our data, and this is very hard to predict and it's it's aired or it's highly fluctuation fluctuating so uh, it's hard to predict uh, cyclic and irregular uh, component of our time analysis so these two are more more or less uh, predictable or we can find ways we where we can predict our forecast or we can forecast our next uh, moves or our next data points so what are the limitation of time series analysis uh, okay is that a question yes and yes uh what what do we mean by white noise like i see a text that says white noise yeah in irregularity section market model It says highly random unforeseen events along with white noise. What does it mean? So you have peaks on your data, right? So here it's just a uh, different, this is the noise. So it's not regular. It could be uh, a spiking high or it could be low. Low. So this is the noise. It, it might be up or low randomly. We don't know at what time that is happening. It's just, uh, unexpected or unforecasted it's unexpected uh, uh, range in our data so so we're calling the spikes uh, a white noise in this case yeah that's okay thank you um yeah i think we can do that So if you have a range in or unfortunate things that could be missed. Okay, do we have another question? Okay. okay, so what are the limitations of time series? Uh so we have to consider those things when we are working on or when we are conducting the time series analysis. It has that the that or it has to be similar to other models or the missing values are not supported. So as you've done in your previous tasks, you always have to clean out the missing data. And here it's also the same. So it's not, you have to uh, handle or find ways to uh, fix the missing values. And the data points must be linear and it always has to be a linear data point. So it has to be, for example, if the time is, it has to be a linear and in their relationship and data transformations are mandatory so we have to transform our data and the models mostly work on a, a univariant data so data type of time series uh, do we have a question yes 
okay. in the previous slide. Could you back to the previous slide? Uh, yes, uh, in the point number two, um, the data points must be linear in the relationship. So uh, by that, do you mean that uh, the time uh, variable or the feature variable should be constant or uh, should be near, linear in the relationship? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, you you could say that I didn't understand the the point number two. Uh, by linearity, do you mean that uh the data points uh, of the time should be linear, or the features that we are uh comparing? So this I think it shows the time. The time so. of... Okay, go go. Okay, so it's it's going to describe the time, and it has to be uh, a linear. So our t our data point, which is uh, at a specific time, has to be linear in the relationship with the other uh, features as well. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have another question? Yes, just yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to know how we, we deal with outliers in this case. So, uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. So, we can have uh, different ways. Uh, there is an echo, maybe if you can mute. Or I don't know if it's maybe my connection. So, um, so there are ways to clean our data, and we will take a look in the future. We can uh, remove trends. We can maybe di differ, and there are different ways. And we can take a look as we go. Maybe if it's not clear by the end of the session, maybe you can ask this question again. Because uh, we have different ways that we are going to describe. OK. Okay, but I was I was talking especially about outliers. Uh, okay, so here you mean here, right? Like for example, on this one, on the irregular uh, component, right? You mean if we have outliers? So you can use the, the same ways that you've been using so to fix outliers in your data. So when you are performing the data cleaning, data analysis, we can you can follow the previous uh, tasks or steps that you've been following to clean the outliers or and everything. So when you were when you were doing the data pre-processing and data in EDA, you can use the same uh, steps or approaches. So it's the same data you don't have a different uh, approach here so like we said it's uh this the first processes are the same as other any as any other uh modeling uh pre-processes so yeah yes Wang. okay thank you okay great uh, do you have more question or no it's it's okay thank you okay uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my question was, when you mentioned that the data points must be linear, uh, does that mean that uh, we want them to be in numerical? We want the, the columns to be numerical? Uh, well, I don't, uh, what do you mean? Like if it was a categorical variable, um, does that mean we want to change it to become a numerical variable so that we can get like a linear relationship between that and another column? Uh, you could do that, but it may not necessarily be true for always. So we can have different uh, data types that are uh, different types. So 
for the ones that you were trying to analyze, it's we can uh, we need to use uh, numerical values. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Sandana. Uh, it might be out of context, context, but uh, uh, after like uh, in the next slide, can you just skip to the next slide? Uh, it says uh, data transformation are mandatory. Uh, so uh, in the in data transformation, one of the the ways we do it is just, for example, we can uh, scale the data up or down uh, in order to have a, a close relationship between the two components. Uh, we're just trying to compare. So uh, what uh, I don't understand. Uh, how we can scale the data. I mean, like, uh, we, when we scale up, what are we actually doing? Is my question clear? Uh, yes, it's clear, but can you maybe uh, redefine it and re rephrase it? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't actually get the idea of... Uh, scaling up the data i mean the the values for example uh, we, we might have a, uh, we might be like comparing two variables in x and y axis so uh, the one with the y axis might be uh, the numbers might be uh, uh, very high than the x axis so to uh, to get the idea or uh, to have a, a good understanding of their relationship we might have to scale uh, one, uh, the one. Uh, so like, how, how is it uh, done? That's my question. Um, okay, so when you're transferring or when you're scaling your data, you're trying to transform it so that it fits your specific scale, right? So here, I, I'm not yes. sure if it has any relation to our topic what we're discussing right now but what i meant here that uh you're transforming your data for example it could be your daytime so some of the what you need to why we are using the data transformation is to convert your uh, data f to fit our objective right so it could be fixing the format or the structure into another format so Mainly, we are uh, going to deal with uh, data that are, for example, let's say the daytime is not uh, as we want it, and we are trying to, we are saying data trans data transformation in a sense that uh, transforming this data into the ones we fit. So I'm not sure uh, how I understand your question. Maybe if someone, uh, any other trainees have understood it, or maybe if they could answer your question. I can, I can uh, give you some, no. okay, I can give, because I don't think I understand your question or how it's related. Yeah, it's, uh, I say that it's, it might be out of context, that's why, uh, yeah. but okay. you answered it uh, uh, by uh, data transformation, you mean uh, the yeah. daytime, oh, of course, I get it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so maybe if someone understood the question or could give you a better explanation, Maybe. I can give someone a chance. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. So, does anyone have an answer for internet? Okay, sorry, I wanted to. So there are two types of data in the time series. Uh, our data could be stationary or non-stationary. And in a stationary, the data set should follow uh, the best, this rules, this is the main, we have three guidelines that we should follow if to say that our data set is stationary. 
and uh, it should not have a trend or it should it should should not be seasonal or cyclic or irregular or it should not have this components of the time series and um, so the first one is the mean and the mean value of the item should be constant and so if even if our data is varying we should have uh, our mean to be consistent or more or less the same to say that our uh, data set is stationary and we should have the variance should be constant with the respect of the time frame so uh with, the res with that respect time point or the time frame we should have a variance that is the same and the covariance measure uh the relationship between the two variables so we should have this um to to say that uh, our data set is stationary and to say that it's non-stationary it's well it's just the opposite of the the one i said so here so we have the mean that's more or less the same and the variance is uh constant within time and uh so uh, uh so the variance is the, just the distance between the mean and we can see that it's constant it, it might be changing over time but it's constant over the time so and uh the co the covariance covariance okay the covariance is the difference between the spreads of the time it's time dependent or it's time independent i mean and in non-stationary the mean is increasing and so this might be uh the average value or the mean value is always increasing and it's not constant if you can see and the variance is varying within time and it's not it's not the same or it's not con constant and here the covariance as the time increases uh, the spreads are the spreads are getting much closer so it's hard to say that this is a, a stationary data or data sets so there are different methods to check the stationarity Stational. We have, we have, okay. Is that a question? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, can you go back to the previous slides? Uh, I was wondering if you can have uh, something like non stationary, but again, let's say it's increasing for some periods, like this, the, the first, the first uh, picture on the mean. Yeah, yeah, on the previous slide, this one, yes. So let's say it's increasing, but then for some period it decreases again, and after that time, and then it increases. So there is an increase which is like non-stationary, non but again, let's say after five years, it is non-stationary, but it is decreasing. How so that are you describing this this one? No, the one below. This one. Okay. Yes. So let's say it's increasing for so, yeah. like first five years, but then it decreases for the next five years. Okay. And does it again. So mm -hmm. it seems like it's not stationary, but again, uh, for after five years, it's it's somehow like stationary, like it goes up and down after five years. Uh, yeah, but the mean is also not the same, yet, right? You can see that it's varying within time, it's cyclic, or it's, it might be seasonal, but the mean is not uh, constant, it's increasing. We don't have the same mean. See, if you look at the mean or the average, it's always changing or it's increasing. Here, if you take a look, what's between the highest value and the lowest value, the average is always the same if you take a look here. So, but here, the so the minimum value could be this one, and the, so the to ma to maximum could be here. It's always increasing if you if you take a look, right? Yeah, get it. So the mean has to be a uh, a horizontal to say that it's constant or it's not changing. So if you can see, it's trending and it's going up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the mean is not constant. And we can't say that it's stationary data set. Right. Yes. Wait, is that a question? Have I understood your question or? Uh, 
Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So we have different methods to check that uh, our data set is stationary, and uh, during our time series analysis model preparation workflow, we must access if the given data set is stationary or not. So we have to be sure that we our data is stationary before uh, uh, actually using it on our model. And we cannot use uh, stat uh, we have to make sure that we're not using statistical and plot tests. So there are two statistical tests available to test if a data set is stationary or not. So we have ADF test that's mostly popular test and it has two uh, approaches. It has two uh, statements that are assuming in uh, so the null hypothesis, it's where the series is non-stationary. So in the alternative hypothesis, the one that you are, we are trying to prove the null hypothesis is not right is the series is stationary. So if the p-value is greater than the 0 0.05, then we can uh, say that the null hypothesis is true or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if it's the value is less or equal to the 0 0.05, then we can accept accept the alternative hypothesis and say that this series is a stationary series. And it's, the second one is the KPSS and it's used for testing a null hypothesis that will perceive the time series as stationary stationary around a deterministic trend against the alternative of a unit root. So since uh, it's t uh, time series analysis is looking for a stationary data for analyzing, we have to make sure that the data set is always stationary. And so when we are converting this non-stationary data, if we have proved that, uh, if we have failed to reject then a hypothesis and see that we have a non-stationary data in our so if we have a non-stationary data then we we can convert it to stationary data by using uh two methods that are detrending and differencing so the first one involves removing trends uh trend effects from a given data set and showing only the difference in values from the trend so we can uh we can make it we can allow it to cycle patterns to be identified. So uh, we, here we can remove the trend effects from the given data sets and show that show the only the difference, the different values from the trend. And in differencing, uh, it's a simple transformation of the series. And uh, so it's in a new time series, which we use to remove the series dependence on time and stabilize the mean of the time series. So a trend and seasonality are reduced uh, when we are doing this. And to calculate differences at a specific time, then we have to we have to subtract our observation from so let's say we have an observation yt that we are doing it at a specific time, which is now, then we have to subtract the the, observa the observation we took from, let's say, y minus 1, which could be uh, previously uh, an observation that was recorded previously. And we can differenti differentiate and have, you can use this calculation to, yeah. So, uh, so let's say this is an stationary data process. And after uh, detrending and after using the approaches, um, we have we can say that remove after removing the after removing the trend effects, we can maybe uh, visualize it to be to look like this, and we can have this outputs after the detrending and after differencing. This this could be our outputs. So so we will take a look more hands on. We can see how we can use Python to uh, to use this approach to calculate or to calculate if our data is stationary and to convert it from non-stationary to stationary data. So if we have any question, uh, ask now. Yes, 
Uh, so when you transform that to stationary data after uh, doing machine learning or prediction, mm -hmm. what you have to turn the data back to how it was before? And how does that be done if that's the case? So, so before feeding uh, this data to our model, we have to make it stationary first. You don't need to worry about turning it back to non-stationary or to the previous uh, state. So we, what you need to do is you, you follow the steps and make our non make your non-stationary data and make it stationary to feed into your model. So you, you don't have to go back. And all right. Okay. Yes, I'm doing that. So uh, if I get it right, we do, uh, uh, I mean, we make uh, our data to stationary in order to get a uh, uh, very stable form of the data in order to predict the, I mean, the future, right? So when, we, when we're when we doing that, it's it will help us to uh, know uh, the, or predict the future, I mean, for example, sales in our case, uh, in the long run, but there are times where uh, the trend go up very high, high up, and there are also times when it goes down. So uh, how can we predict those time if we are like omitting or if we're detrending them or uh, if we just strip out the uh, seasonality of the data? Does it really affect our like prediction? I, I assume um, that. It won't affect uh, that much because this seasonality and trendiness is a uh, very short-lived. But uh, that's why I think uh, that's why we're uh, we're doing that in the first place. But how can we make sure uh, to provide our clients uh, the right uh, prediction in times like uh, that? I mean, for season like that, where uh, demands me or or sales may go up or down. Uh, so when you're making the our data sets uh, stationary, you're not actually uh, you may not be changing the whole data. So what you're doing is having the same or constant mean and having a variant that are uh, continuous or the same, right? So what we are focusing is having this uh, things fulfilled so that we can feed it in our model. That's not actually going to change, or it's not going to bring. Uh, a huge impact on our data it's going to just uh make our data or our time series data that the mean and the variance do not vary and we just we just make sure that our mean and variance are the same or it doesn't vary across the our time and that the data should be you know not like not seasonal or trendy so it's not going to affect it, the prediction. If we are using a model or if we are using machine learning model, it's going to predict uh, if we have uh, the same or constant mean or variance. Does that make sense? It makes sense. But uh, if you get my question, my question is, uh, it's, uh, of course, like doing that will help us to uh, predict uh, because like it will uh, strip out the outliers uh for us but uh our prediction uh won't be helpful for uh, i guess uh times like uh, i mean seasonal the uh, moments we can use it uh, i mean we can't rely on it on times like that right yeah of course uh, i mean it's harder to predict this kind of things so so mainly we're just predicting for other times other than like the times where it goes up or down, right? Yeah, so in order to uh, predict, then we have to have, uh, I don't know, uh, we don't need to have a trend or seasonality in our data. So we cannot predict with seasonality and trend in, a, in our series. So uh, I get that, it makes sense. That's Thank going you. to be difficult, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Mohammed. Question is, where where do we need to do 
I'm sorry, Mohammed, I was not able to hear that. Maybe if you could speak into the mic, your voice is just far away. Okay, Mohammed? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. So uh, my question was, where do we need to do TSA? Is it uh, within EDA or after it, when we're deploying uh, or before we deploying our machine learning algorithm? So time series analysis, uh, so TSA is time series analysis and it's the whole process where after you have prepared your data and after you have collected and done the EDA, you, uh, we have different type of models that are used to calculate or to see, to, to use in our analysis. So we used timed series or data sets to, so it's the whole process basically after the, uh, after you've done the data cleaning and data preparation, we use different models to, to, to perform our data analysis process. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, yes, I'm dark. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, my question is, um, what makes time series data different from the real time data? Uh, you know, when I'm thinking some examples of time series data, uh, they looks like some of the examples what I'm thinking looks like real time data. Or can you give us any example of time series data? Okay, so uh, in the time series data, we have uh, we have the same or if we have um, let's say our data or our time. Let's say it's we use it or we at a certain data point, which is at a certain time, or we have time as the main uh, variable in calculating time series analysis, and this time c c should be uh, in a pattern, or it could be daily, or it could be monthly, or it could be yearly, or, you know, it we need to have this um, defined time series or timetable to have a time series analysis. Uh, we have to have uh, a time range or that's that is accepted for example it could be daily or monthly or yearly does that make sense uh, yeah. our time is uh, more or less the same or in the same range so we can't have varying time uh time frame yeah okay thanks so yeah our data thanks. points have to be within a specific time frame to be a, a time series analysis to perform or to perform a time series analysis. So before, uh, when you, you were doing other tasks, are uh, so the date the date is not the main focus. And here we have to have the date as uh, a main point. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay, so uh, let's now take a look at the implementation of a time series analysis. Here we, uh, we are using a sample data that is used uh, in a different or in a different business so let's let's say we have different stocks and uh we have different stocks and we, we have different sales 
and we are going to perform a time uh, series analysis on this data. So we first import the necessary libraries that is going to use that we are going to use. We're going to use NumPy, Pandas, and Matlab, Matlab libraries, and we load our data. Uh, you, you guys can see my screen, right? I'm assuming you do. Okay. So we load yes, our please. data, and we first uh, let's say like like the tasks you've been doing previously. You we take a look at what data our data set contains. So we study our data. So here uh, we take a look at this data, uh, Stokes data frame, and we identify the number of unique values and its unique values to see if it's actually going to be used in our uh, in our cross analysis process. And okay, let's say so. If we take a look at our Stokes data frame. Let's say here uh, we have uh, different unique values. So uh, the script ID, this is a one column that we are on concerning our business or objective, or in this case, we are actually not going to use our ID. So uh, let's display our table. Okay. We have been on the drive, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think I'm using a different account. Let me just give me a second to go back to another account. Okay, uh, so uh, till I change my account, so we will be loading our data here. And uh, after that, we're going to see how many unique values it has, our script ID, we're going to, so we have given, this is given us uh, in our data, in this case, or in this objective, we are going to, we are give, we're going to study this column and we're going to see how many unique values it has and we're going to see the unique values that it contains and so we have two ids in our data if if it's right okay Right, you can see my screen, right? So I was using a different account and that's, it was not getting this file, that's why. So here uh, we have two different columns that are, are showing an ID. And uh, so uh, we only need uh, one ID and we don't need this ID. So after evaluating that, we, are, we can drop, the first thing we did is we dropped this ID and uh and so yeah okay so we drop this id and after dropping this id we see that this time step we need to use this time stamp as an, an index and we can convert it convert it to a date time so that we can use it in the future and we're doing this we are converting it to date time because when uh you are working on it in the future or to see that if it's changing if our sales are, let's say, changing on the holidays and changing on the weekdays or on weekends, we have to have the, we have to have the daytime, uh, we have to have the timestamp converted to daytime. And after doing that, uh, let's say, let's read the second, here we read the second value or the second data, which is the stock data. And we are going to, so we are, what we are going to do is we are going to merge this two data 
and uh, so we use uh, the script ID this this column and this so basically we can see that uh, before dropping uh, here so the ID and the script ID can can be seen uh, so the same so we can use use this ID to merge this uh, two data frames and so we merge using the ID and this this and ring the script ID and so yeah, so uh, so you you guys have this uh, notebook on your drive so you guys can access we have a different uh, data set and we have a different business objective that we are trying to prove here so um, after we merge the after we've merged this uh, the stocks and the, this data the second uh, data frame uh, okay here what we are going to do is we're going to drop some comments that we're not going to use so again uh, we are going to be using this one and since we have since we already are going to be using the script id uh, to continue and so we drop this so this is just a normal uh that's a pr processing uh again we okay so this is a dropped uh the draft column and this is the time the time stamp data frame so the difference between this two time frame data frames are here in the time stamp data frame we have used the time stamp as an index uh, we used it and here in the merge data frame we have we're not using time stamp as our index and the difference between the two is that the yeah the index as a time stamp does. so yeah uh okay so what we're going to do uh, is that we, so in the, in our merge data frame, we take a look at the, so here, what our business view is that we are asked to, to look at this specific stocks that this, the names that are this values. So we have five values that our name should match and we are going to study the analysis or that we're going to perform time Serious analysis on this specific rows, so that is why we are displaying the the names here, just to get which data are uh, are given uh, specific stocks. So after getting the rows, uh, we merge this, uh, we create a merge and we merge the data frames uh, with the name with the the name as the main column. And after merging, we have see if you can see we have the name merged and uh so the first uh so this is only showing the head so we have we also have this other uh four rows that are not displayed and so yeah uh so here we choose after them so this is the main reason that we converted our timestamp into a date time that we're going to see we're going to choose the months and you we're going to uh see uh or specify the timestamps to to define if the time is on the holidays or to see that if on if it's on the weekdays or weekends so here this is a function to choose on which the type of the month and so yeah this is the merge data frame and this is the unique values are here the name of the unique values we check that if we actually chose the a specific rows as to continue and we have named it as curated merge data frame and so here if we check yeah our data is uh only containing the name variables that are the this five ones that are given and for us to study and to analyze and so um so here uh we have the price uh the high price the low price and the open price and the cool the closing price for our specific uh, rows or our specific stocks and after after uh, we try to visualize and see that uh, the sales or the to see how it's actually separate separated within the months so uh, we have separated out the month column from the time step so we can have more precise results so we have def uh, we have seen if you take a look that it's time it's monthly or weekly based. So 
so we can see that the results in a more precise, so we can have more precise results. So for example, if I wish to observe a specific stock, let's say this reliance stock, and observe its values under a particular month or a particular day per, uh, per month per se. So here, if we take, uh, if, we, if we segregate the months from the timestamp, if you take a look, then it's segregated into a month. We can, we have a pandas library that's going to uh, segregate a, a month from the timestamp. So uh, now we have to visualize this particular stock and uh, we can use this, um, let's say this ID, this column or this, uh, we can use the name. So if here, if we use, uh, so the, we're going to use the timestamp that we have to identify which uh, specific elements or features we are going to use and after that uh, after defining the specific elements that we are going to use in our analysis uh, process and so we merge and we try to visualize our data so when we visualize our data we can see that it's a trend right since it's going up and it's not uh, so we can we can see that the mean may not be consistent from looking at the our visualization, so what this is, what this does is going to uh, show the variations of NFT. This is a value through uh, throughout our observations. So it's going to show the stock price price within the month of uh, that's between April and September. So yeah, it's going to show between the April and September, and it shows that our after plotting our data, we can see that it's uh, it's a trendy. So it has a trendy uh, behavior. So uh, okay. So yeah, this is uh, we can see that it's trendy. And if we visualize our uh, variation NFT plotted against the timestamp, so this is a monthly var uh, variation. Here it's just from April to September, but here it's just a general, a general monthly uh, variation. So we can see that uh, this this is also trendy, but we can see that uh, it's seasonal, right? If we take a look, there are different uh, breakpoints here. That so maybe in our case it could be the start of the month where our sales go down, or uh, we have a different uh, values in our data sets. So for example, if let's say if this is, uh, let's assume that this is a weekly, so let's just assume this shows a weekly sales. And if we have this, and let's, if this describes uh, maybe with the weekends, then we can see that uh, it's seasonal. So uh, within a different time, it, it's repeated and it has uh, a, it has the same patterns or it has a pattern that we can see or we can describe. So uh, so within the timestamp as an index, the graph has few continuous points in between. And this is because we have data of the days when stock market is open. So yeah, uh, so this shows uh, where the, the peak ones shows our data that is, so this is a stock market that it's when it's open. So. For example, if we don't have uh, data for the weekend or any other holiday, uh, or even the market is closed. So when we plot this price against the index, and then it's a continuous value. OK, so uh, okay, this is uh, going to show the real answer that this we're going to use this stock name uh, chosen, and we're going to evaluate it's uh, over the time. So if we take a look here, uh, what this plot shows that it shows the variation of volumes of Reliance, Reliance stock under a period of time. So here, uh, so, so having this for this specific stock type, uh, it might have uh, peaks or different variations that, that are not, um, let's say, uh, 
constant or linear or it's not as uh, predictable or so this one is different this this here on the, let's say so this may show the time or the date it, it might be a month so what uh, we are just using here is uh let's say okay so so this is the volume against the the time so uh, so if we choose a specific month, maybe this is the month of August, then we might have a peak on one of the days. This might be, in our case, in our sales, uh, we might have had a promotion and we might have a sale, a promotion for a sale, and we might have more sale or more customers drawn into our business. And here, this uh, when concerning this stock market, this might be where we had a peak in our uh, sales. So after uh, seeing that uh, our data is not uh, linear or it's, it's not uh, the same, so okay, so okay, this variation so shows that uh, the throughputs of our of our observation. So we can see that this is also trendy. Uh, we this is increasing index of our observation from the months of. So I think it's the same plot and. So, uh, also correlation and correlation plots. So when we are, uh, so when we say auto correlation plots, it tells us the similarity between the observation as a function of time lag between them. So if there is a time lag between them, and we can see that our it, it, it helps us see the similarity between our observation, and it is designed to show us whether this element of a time series are positively correlated or negatively correlated, or that are independent of each other. And our autocorrelation can range between a negative one to one. And the horizontal axis of autocorrelation plots shows the size of the lag between the elements of the time series. So here, if the correlation lag is two and the Okay, so, so here, if the correlation lag is uh, between two and the time series element and the corresponding elements that we are that were observed to time per period year period earlier. Hmm. So if you can see this, this is a trend. It's going down and it's going up. So it's uh, actually a cyclic. Uh, you can see that the trend is going down. You can see that it's positive. It's a negative trend, and here it's going up. And we'll have a negative uh, auto correlation here, it means that the close price. So the price is this is the this is going to show the close price value after the time lag are not dependent on the this value. So it has uh, gone below the zero, or it has a negative uh, auto correlation. Uh, so this is uh, yeah, this is the same data, different visualization. Uh, it's we're using the graphics TAC plot to visualize this, and uh, it's this is a very helpful way to visualize uh, in a time series analysis. So uh, before uh, removing the trend, this is the the plot that we have. Uh, seen that it's going to show the close price and related to the time and so we can see that we has it has trend in our data and before before removing the trend our value can look like this and uh, okay yes is that a question Yes, sorry to interrupt, but uh, in the previous uh, graph I saw in the x-axis there is a lag. What do we mean by lag here? Uh, here? Let's clear up. So this, the lags are going to be... Up, uh, uh, yeah, there. Oh, wait, let me just... So when you are plotting a a graphics TAC plot, uh, it's one of the features that you are going to verify. And let me just I actually 
to verify, I'm just going to shake. So yeah, the, so the lags are, are an integer or an array of lag values. It's used on horizontal axis and uh, so here, so we don't have, uh, I'm not sure what it describes here actually. It's okay, I'm going to. Okay, so up. yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll look it up and I'll get back to you on this. So on this one, so it's we use it to, to, to visualize the graphic TSA plot. So that's, Okay, so uh, so this is the visualization visualization before removing the trends, and it's going to look like this after removing the trends. And to remove the trends, uh, there are different. There we go. So uh, yeah, so we can use this function to remove our, the trends from our data. So if you guys, uh, if you take a look, uh, we have different ways here. Okay, so let me, I'll get back to that. And let me just for now show you the visualization and see that uh, our data from our plants, from our plots, I'm sorry. So, so this is before removing the trends and this value is after removing the trends. And we can see that it has uh, really a linear, uh, ah, okay. So to, to see that, uh, seeing that our data is uh, trending and looking at the visualization may not be enough and we have to find out if we actually have a stationary or a non-stationary data. So uh, like we said, we, we check the mean invariance of the data to see that if our data is stationary or not. So a quick and dirty check to see if our time series is non-stationary is to review the summary statics. So you can split uh, your data into two uh, partitions and compare the mean invariance of each group. And if they differ, if they are different, and if their difference is uh, significant, then the time series is more likely non-stationary. So if we follow the step and so if we split our data into two and if we check the mean and between the two and if we check the variance between this values this two and we can see that the mean is basically different or it varies a lot and the variance is also uh, it differs so we can see that this uh this is non-stationary data and or you can say that our data data set is non-stationary so we can use this calculation to 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 measure the mean and the variance and uh, decide if our data is stationary or non-stationary. Non-stationary, and uh, so we have, like we said, we have the augmented Dickey Fuller test that is a type of stat statistical test, and it's called the unit root test. So the intuition, the in institution behind a root. A unit root test is that it, d it determines how strongly a time series is defined by a trend. And there are a number of tests and augmented Dickey Fuller, maybe one of them that's wisely used. And so this is the the way we calculate uh, and see the if we have a p value and we have the mean and variance. So, like we said before, if we have a p value that's greater than greater than 0 0.05, then we uh, we rejected the null hypothesis, right? So we can say, so our null hypothesis being our data is uh, stationary, non-stationary, and our uh, and the data being stationary is what we are trying to prove. And if our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then we, this data is non-stationary. And after removing our trend from our from our non-stationary data here, if you take a look. Uh, so if we follow this step here, the above. Uh, mm 
Okay, so after removing trends. So here, uh, after removing the trends, uh, we can see that um, after following the steps, that uh, after we can see that the p-value is has decreased to zero, which means it's way less than zero point zero five. So we uh, we reject the null hypothesis and say that this is a statistical, uh, a, a linear data, or and we can, if we get uh, a linear data, or we can feed this to our model and uh, start training our data. So, yeah, this is the basic steps. Uh, you guys can get this notebook if you have any question, maybe you can ask. Okay, so Andanak has answered the last question. So it's a fixed amount of passing time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay, thank you, Andanak, for your answer and clarification. Okay. okay, so do we have any question? I see that we have way past our time. Okay, uh, so you guys can find this notebook attached in the drive, and thank you for your time. If you have any more questions, you can ask on Slack. Thank you, everyone.